start, we're here with Henrik Wickforce, uh, Optimus World Champion 2023 from KSS, uh, coached by Tom Holm. So Henrik, uh, first we would like to start uh, with you telling us about a bit about your life. So could you tell us about your Optimus career, how it started? Um, <clears throat> so uh, it started uh, all the way in 2018 uh when i started training in kss uh and i thought optimist was fun so i i kept on training and i thought if i thought it was fun to compete with my friends um so i kept on sailing and i kept on improving and uh, uh yeah and i think maybe 2020 i i i started to train even more because i i, I started to feel like i could um really make something out of this and um and yeah then then uh, then just kept getting better and better in the first opti worlds i i didn't really have much uh, much i thought i would get out of it but i got more experience from it and also from the second and uh yeah i i, I just used that experience and all of my training and all the fun i've had through the years to to um win the world championship and yeah okay nice nice um what do you think would be your highlights from optimist sailing uh of of course i think uh, the last race in the opti worlds 2023 was uh, i think the biggest highlight because because of uh, the match racing uh, i did with uh, the american travis greenberg um and maybe also in garda in the last race uh in the garda regatta also in 2023 so also a big highlight okay okay and what do you think were some of the big milestones that brought you to achieving the world champion title what do you think were like okay we're getting closer what was the first goal i mean i in 2022 i i, I think it was my peak speed and uh, and yeah it was my peak speed but i didn't really have the best start technique and i didn't really have the i couldn't really handle the nervousness and the uh, and the stuff you need for for uh, winning a world championship the mentality like uh, in your head and that's something i really improved through the last year and i think that was like an important part of it okay okay one question about your performance i mean it's really important for me the relation with your coach with your teammates how is it important for you that because at the end you need the coach your teammates you need to be at the same line and pushing hard every day what do you think about that uh, yeah i think it's very important to have a good relationship not only with your coach but with your friends because you with your friends you're pushing each other to become better and better and i think that's very important and also if you make good friends you if you have a lot of fun then it's also going to be better and so yeah i think it's very important yeah yes i think that at the end if you want to arrive to the top you need your teammates you can do this alone and it's really important that because many sailors they understand that uh, we need to grow up with our club our teammates always uh, learning from our coach i think uh, this is really important yeah i agree how long have you been with your coach with tom ton um Is he your only coach or how did oh, i have had more coaches in uh, in uh, sweden but i think the the ton was the most important and the coach that has helped me the most i i i don't i don't i really don't think i could have came this far in the optimist without him so uh, i think ton is here so thank you ton a lot <laughs> uh but yeah i think i've been with ton maybe uh two three years uh okay. yeah since 2020 maybe okay okay nice and what motivated you to start sailing do you have any family member that's sailing or how did it work out to you because yeah. it's quite cold now in sweden yeah it's quite cold 
but I, in the summer it's also quite warm so uh, but yeah it, it all started with the, my my dad was a sailor and uh, he uh, he he got me into the optimist and uh into the trainings and yeah as i said earlier i um i really like the sailing because because of the relationship you develop with your friends and uh, and uh, yeah i think the most important uh, part is your friends and then also i like the freedom you have on the water and uh, overall the sailing i really like it so yeah yeah it's nice very nice feeling being able to be there by yourself now when you're a small kid yeah very nice very nice when you have a lot of thoughts from from school and you have a test tomorrow you can go go out on the water have have some time uh, in the optimist and compete with others and the thoughts will just disappear it's very nice yeah 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 it is and yeah we agree lots uh, we think it's very important uh, all the relationships you make makes you grow as a person and as a sailor because it teaches you lots of values like friendship as you were saying so yeah very good insight you were saying there um don't know if you want to add anything else albert you want to make anything else for this introduction yes i mean uh, i'm surprised with henry because now he's in, also in 29er and we have been talking before this meeting about uh, his performance with the 29er and he said that well we are in doing a good, good job but we need to improve uh, we need to work more and really hard. I mean, it's it's nice to to listen this because at the end, it's important that if you want to get something, you have to work every day. You can be at home waiting because uh, you need to do something. And Henry, I think that it's it's really good on that that he knows what he wants and he's pushing hard. I think that this is is really nice to see that. In some sailor yeah especially young sailors it's very nice to see it's like from the start you see yeah, we have all the the same attributes and we're quite similar with the competitiveness and the values and everything very nice very nice and we were we now wanted to talk about about technique which is maybe what you're really good at no if you're world champion so we had a one question what do you think were the fundamentals like what do you think made you win the world in technique wise what do you improve that made you up your result from turkey the year before um i think the most important part of the technique is just to have a good relationship with the boat you have to have a good feeling for the boat when you're going fast and when you're going slow and uh, i think something that i proved a lot from uh 2022 to 2023 was um, the way that I handled the strong winds. Um, I just got a lot better. My, I, I got a bit heavier, but not very much. I'm pretty small now too, but uh, um, I, I improved the strong winds a lot. And I think I think that's very important as a um, as a sailor, and especially as a small sailor, to uh, sail these strong winds, uh, strong wind sessions even if it's tough you know every strong wind session is worth a lot it's uh it's it's uh yeah but i don't think in the in the technique it's a lot about experience and um just doing a lot of drills and uh yeah okay so this this links really good with our next question uh do you know any drills that uh, you think are very useful maybe if you're talking about strong winds any like strong wind drills that you liked or you think we're very good for improving or just uh, general sailing how was your your opti days um i think of course the the most important drills you can do is just speed test i don't and and start uh is the i think is most important drill so you don't think you can do en enough of it because you can always improve um i really liked uh one drill where you had to do a lot of maneuvers and it was uh, in Sweden. I think that there are some Swedish here, uh, but it's in Sweden. It's called Corridoren, and it's when uh, two ribs are going uh, up like this, and uh, then you have a rapid start, and the sailors uh, are supposed to be between the ribs, but you want to be first, so you have to do a lot of tacks, and there are a lot of situations, and that really improves your technique on the tacks, but also on very 
very tight uh, scenarios. I yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, and like you're linking all the questions so well. Our next question is um, in in Optimus, like in Gold Fleet, uh, the racing is really tight. Um, what do you think the the gains are? Do you think it's the from the start early on that you're making the gains, or just managing at the top mark? How, where do you think it is that the good gold sailors uh, make the difference? Yeah, I I think uh, I think the starts are. If you make, I think the starts are a, a huge part of the race, especially in like these high level fleets, like the gold fleet in the worlds. I, I think if you can make a good start, you you have you have a uh, of course a huge um, advantage. And uh, I also think it's uh, very important that you sail on the fleet very well, like that you you. So for example, if you're leading, I I always have a thumb rule for when you're leading is that you want to be between the top mark and the fleet, so that you never they never get in front. And um, and then I would say a very important part is to minimize the risks, to not gamble. I never like to go out on the corners much, and I always like to sail in the middle on the shifts. And yeah. I, I think okay. that's the most important. Okay, nice. Very interesting. Very interesting. And regarding boat tuning, uh, do you think uh, you also made progress there? Do you think you were a very speedy sailor or just uh, clever, as you're saying? Because they um, always say that the, the fastest are the most clever. Uh, I think I my weak point was maybe the trimming, but I, I think my my strong point was my speed and my starts. but um i learned a lot from the tr trimming from ton uh, and from all my experience in the opti and um uh i just think that yeah you gain a lot you gain a lot of uh, if you gain a lot of experience you will you will know how to trim the boat very well and i i think it's very important uh something that not uh, everybody knows and it's just it's just that you need to know why, sir. Why you do certain stuff on the boat, like why you take the mast back in uh, sometimes, or uh, like the physics behind it. I think is very important because if you know exactly why something is like this, then you can, um, uh, on your own, think of ways that you can do it, and you would just understand understand it much better. And I think that's that's very important. Um, but yeah. Okay, nice, nice. And do you think uh, tuning and speed is related, or you think you can be fast without uh, knowing lots about tuning? No, I think it's uh, this a relationship between both. I I really think that um, because uh, you, the boat and the sail is your engine, and you need to have a good engine to be fast. Uh, and then of course the technique uh, has a, has a big part of it as well. But yeah, I think it's a a relationship that's that's good yeah okay okay interesting interesting and um, you want to add anything Albert, before we yes. move to the for you which is the most mm. important thing to that one sailor needs i mean for you if now you have to decide what do you need to train every day what do you choose um I, I didn't really understand the question. Can you say again? If you, for example, no, for me, it's really important to have a really good coach, good uh, relationship with my coach uh, and also with my teammates. For you, which is the most important thing that you need? Um, yeah, I think also an important thing that I would need is good relationship, but I also need, uh, uh, I also need to have fun. <laughs> that's um, I think that's the most important, uh, and I I really think that it's important uh, like quality over quantity. I think that uh, um, it's important to have uh, not too long sessions, but intensity and uh, then because you can get very tired of uh, two hour sessions. But if you're out for six hours, I think that you will stop learning after a few hours, and it will just get tired. So. That's also an important thing for me. Yeah. 
Okay. 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 Guys, uh, I'm happy to listen that. I think that uh, we need to enjoy every day because at the end we we spend many hours in the water in the club, and we need to know that this it's it's a game, and the most important thing is it's, it's enjoy. You know, I think also uh in in sailing in our sport is really important then important to understand that at the end we lose or we win but we need to enjoy the, the way you know it's how we do that is the most important thing because uh, i don't know you but maybe yes yeah, you are the world champions but i think that you lose many races to arrive to the top you know at the end you win you won one race, two race, ten race, but you lose many. And for you, how is this process that you need to lose because at the end you will win? So, how yeah, do you think? I think, um, yeah, it's a, it, you need to really learn from your mistakes. It's it sounds like uh, very obvious, but uh, it's very true. Also, the the people that make a lot of mistakes are on people that will be very good too and the people that will um sacrifice hours and go out on the water more and focus more than others and but also at the same time you know um the optimist is still only the first boat to sailing and it's a long way the the optimist is just like the the go-kart in uh, you know in uh, racing yeah so i i think that not everybody will succeed in the opti but if you just keep sailing there will be new boats i think that's that's a really fun part of sailing there are uh, very many boats and uh, a very uh, a lot of things that are different from each boat and uh, yeah i think it's a lot of fun with that okay sounds super good super good insight super good insight and it links uh, with the next topic which is racing wanted to speak about racing and it's like um how do you prepare for racing like how what were you thinking the days before the world championship were you feeling confident were you trying to not feel overconfident how are you like getting into the mental game there um do you, do you remember yeah i remember um i think the day before i i i just uh, want to sleep a lot so i have the most a lot of energy and then have a good breakfast but then when you start coming closer to the day, then uh, to the races, I mean, um, then I, I've always thought uh, in in races that are important and that or they are good fleets. Um, that I always think that I I need to be or that I am the best in this fleet and nobody is as good on the starting line. So I will be first. Like just that mentality, even if you're not the best. It, it's just uh, something that, for me, has taken away nervousness and uh, uh, and like that. So um, that's uh, what I thought in the in the last race of the World Championship. Just that uh, I will do this because I deserve it, you know. And uh, but I think it's 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 very hard, of course, and you will get nervous many many times. Um, but just. Uh, you will learn from it each each time like uh in the in the world in 2022 um i was also second uh, for, um, before the last day and uh, there i didn't really have the same experience and i didn't really know how to handle the nervousness and that led to that i became fifth in the end and i so but i learned from it in the uh okay. i learned from that so i took it to the was in 2023 and i it made so that i won yeah so so you learn from your mistakes right as you were saying before yeah. Yeah. yes for me it's really important that at the end you never lose if you learn this is the the big thing no you have to you need to have this here and think every day that we need to to learn from our mistakes this is really important and also now Henrik, he's doing that in 29 er He started some months ago and now he's doing this work. And thank you, Henrik. I, I mean, it's amazing your, your mindset. It's, it's amazing and congrats. Yeah, in the 29 er it's 
you you really have to learn from your mistakes because it's in the beginning it's really just a boat where you swim a lot uh, it's just <laughs> capsize uh, over capsize but then you get through that part and and then you really start sailing with the boat <laughs> yeah it's part of, of the game yeah exactly nice nice and um, were you working with a sports psychologist or any professional or how did you get this mindset mindset your coach um I, I think I mostly got it from myself. I haven't worked with, worked with a psychologist, um, maybe in the future, I don't know, but I think I got it from myself a lot. Oh, that's really good, you learn that from yourself. Um, and what, what, what advice would you give to your younger you? If you could, um, if you could speak with him, like, what do you think would make him improve faster? Um, I think uh, an advice I would give is that I should go and uh, train more strong wind uh, because sometimes when you're young you stay inside and don't go out if it's more wind or for me because I was small uh, I didn't want to do it and I, it's it, it can be scary uh, and yeah uh, but just as I said earlier uh, the strong wind sessions give a lot uh, of experience and you learn a lot from it so that's probably uh, advice I would give to my younger self. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, you're saying that Tom helped you lots in your sailing. Do you have any moments with him that you were like, "This was a big step," or "We progressed here"? Like, do you remember any moments with him you maybe want to share, or with any role models? Um. Uh, moments. You mean that? That. That made me improve a lot, or yeah, like, like uh, moments with him, like memories with him that uh, you really remember, and you think that yeah, they helped you progress. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, a, a big part, uh, a moment with him maybe was that um, us together we we made up some start techniques uh, that we call different stuff <laughs> that we also used uh, a lot in the future, and I think Ton Ton will use it in the future now as well um but that we developed together and i think it was uh, a big step uh, uh really good um for the world championships nice 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 um and you're saying that in in strong winds it was hard do you think there would have been any training methods or anything that could have maybe helped you with with those days do you think maybe you're working more on shore and physical training or anything like that could have helped you um, yeah, I think physical training, of course, could help. Um, but I think yeah, something that can be really good um, uh, training in strong wind is sailing and uh, sailing with one hand that you have the main sheet in one hand. Uh, because I think bathing is a, a really big part of strong wind that you don't come up in the first mark with for with 20 liters water in your boat. That's a huge part. And uh, so that you have maybe some drills where you only sail with one hand uh, and then pretend to uh, bail or that you actually bail, I think is, yeah. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Well, I don't have any more questions, Albert. Don't know if you want to add anything to any more questions. Well, now we can start with the questions from our friends and you have the chat here and you can write all that you, you want. Yeah, we have Ken Molloy that's asking the first question, and it's, does the boat make a difference? Uh, were you sailing different boats? How did you do it, um, Henrik? Uh, 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 I think he refers to the, the optimist hull. Uh, do you think it makes a difference, the, um, sailing one brand or another? How, what was your... Oh, okay. Um, I think the actual boat doesn't make uh, the brand, I don't think it makes a very big difference. I just think that the uh, trimming you do on the boat makes a big difference. Uh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, and the trimming on the sail as well. I think it's more important. So I think you can have almost any boat that is in good condition. Okay. 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 Um. So, Sosha Korsak is asking a question, well, two questions, and it's, 
what, in your opinion, makes the, the good optimist coach? What do you think makes them stand the difference? Because we spoke about the sailors, and this is a very interesting question. Um, I think a, re a good optimist coach is a coach that um, really understands uh, the sailors, uh, and that I think for me it was important that I didn't have a coach that was screaming a lot on the water and was loud and was shouting at me. I liked the coach that was a bit more like calm. calm. Yeah, uh, but uh, a coach that can explain well, well um, and uh, you, the coach that you can have a good relationship, uh, I think is important. Okay, and do you think uh, a good sailor and go, good coach will go hand by hand? Or do you think it, it can it can differ? Do you think uh, what do you think on this? Um, I think I think it can go pretty much hand in hand uh, because uh, a, a good coach can make a good sailor, uh, and uh, a, a good sailor and a bad coach. I yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it goes hand in hand, but okay, I think okay. It's and what values are the most important to you? Uh, Sasha is asking. Uh, what values? What I think she means it's on the chat. I think she means in the sense of um, friendship and like what we were speaking before. Like, what else do you think makes? Um, I think uh, having fun uh, and relate like the relationship with your coach and your friends. I think is very important and. Um, uh having uh like loving sailing and wanting to train and wanting to be better uh i think also okay and ted is asking another question and nikolai another one it's what is the hardest condition to sail in what do you think it is for you what was the hardest um for me uh it depends on the time but in the beginning it was uh, strong wind big waves uh but I think it really depends on the person. Uh, a, a, a heavy sailor may be light winds and choppy conditions. Um, but uh, for me, it was mostly the strong winds. But I think I developed uh, a good strong wind technique uh, in the last year. Um, uh, but yeah, I would say I would say that. OK, and then Nikolai is asking, does it make a big difference when your sail has a lot of scars and when it doesn't? Um, Depends for what, you know, maybe? What do yeah, you think? In my experience, uh, of course it makes a difference, but in my experience, it, it really depends on how much, but I don't think it's, if there's a few scars, I don't think, it's scars, you mean that there is like, uh, or what do you mean with scars? It's like that it's going, Mm. That it's, you know, I I don't understand the maybe Nikolai can can type what he means. Yeah, but I, I think he means uh, you know that the sail the stress when, okay. when you roll the sail, it gets yeah. like scratch or yeah so that's I, what I, he means. I think when it stripes in your sail, yeah, uh, uh yeah, exactly. I uh, it, it depends on how much, but I think uh, the trimming is much more important. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, a newer sale will be better. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Elias Aretz is asking, "What's the most new thing for you in the 29er?" That we were speaking about this a bit before, and maybe you can okay. tell everyone what's the big differences. Uh, I would say two things. Uh, the first is sailing with another person. <laughs> it's a, a big challenge. Uh, it it can be a lot of fun, but you can also uh, it can be less fun too. But uh, <laughs> that that I think it's a it's a very big challenge. Uh, but you can you will build the relationship. Uh, it's just a matter of time, I think. Um, and also a big challenge was uh, the way the twenty nine er the the optimist is more like a like a boat that just. You can move around in the boat and it will stay pretty much the same in the water. But the 29er, you have to be very, very much better with the balance. Uh, it's much more unstable. So that's that's also a big thing. Okay. Okay. 
And then, very interesting, yeah, the 29er can be complicated, especially suddenly having to sit with another person and learning what communication is about, it's a big step, big step. Yes, and you, will then, some, you will do some capsize the first two months, but later <laughs> you will get good control. It's normal. Also, yeah. happened this in 49er, it's, it's the same. No yeah. worries. Yeah. But I mean, it's fun. It's a lot faster boat. <laughs> and uh, on the downwind, three sails instead of one, and two sails on the upwind. So, yes, you can feel the, all the speed. It's amazing how you can get yeah. this speed and with the waves. It's, it's good. Yeah, it's fantastic. And then we have a question by Marcus. He's asking, do you think the definition of a great sailor is a person who is in good in light winds or in stronger winds? Um, I mean, uh, I think a good sailor is an uh, all-around sailor, but if I had to choose one, I, I, I would actually say stronger winds because it requires more uh, technique and uh, it's just, I, I, from, I, from my experience, it's, it's a lot tougher conditions. I think light wind is more about your technique in the boat and of course the weight has a lot to do with it but in the strong winds it can be mentally hard as well um yeah but okay. that's i mean i i think you can think a lot different as well but yeah okay interesting um then ted ted is asking lots of questions today so that's great and he's asking what's the most frustrating thing in optimist for you um uh, for me, it's when I get uh, a black flag in the start, uh, and then I have to, uh, I can't be in the race. Uh, that's for me the most frustrating, uh, frustrating thing. Uh, or maybe if you get a, a protest. <laughs> yeah. Did this happen to you in any important event, getting a black flag? Um, yeah, actually, I have one time. Yeah, it's uh, it's in 2021 at the qualifications for the for the championships in Sweden mm -hmm. and it was uh, the first race uh, I became in the finish line third and then my dad and um, uh, coach came up to me and said you got a black flag and uh, uh, yeah that was tough so I, I, I really started yeah I started crying and it was not very nice but um, uh, yeah that was <laughs> frustrating uh, but I managed to, because in, in that qualification, you can only, um, what's it called when you, um, uh, when you cancel one race, you, you can only start one race. Yeah. So I couldn't make any bad races after that. And, uh, so I started sailing very safe after that, but that was very frustrating. So I thought it was over, but in the end I qualified, I qualified for the world. So. It, it, it was good, yeah. It, it, it got better. It Look, hey, your coach was here helping in the chat. He was telling this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> he's smart, listening. Yeah. He's listening to you. Yeah. And then Dan is asking if you have any tips about sailing in Garda. Um, I mean, uh, a lot of people say go on the right, and uh, I agree. <laughs> Just, uh, and I think in Garda, it's very, uh, the starts, I think, are very important because uh, it's like 90% of the time that you go on the right and get the shift, you know. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you don't get a good start, you will be on port behind everybody else and you can't really attack away. So, uh, yeah, uh, I would say train starts in Garda and uh, Garda is a great place to train strong wind, so train strong wind too. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you get any early mornings in Garda? Uh, yeah, so very maybe... early. In a, in a Halloween cup, I got up at maybe five thirty for because the first start was at eight in the oh. in, in the Pela. Oh no, seven thirty was the first start. It was insane, <laughs> but uh, it was in the Pela conditions because it was uh, yeah morning they breeze. No? To do it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. So also getting sleep when you can, no? In Garda, it's also a good tip. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. 
And then Marcus is asking, do you have some tips for a heavy sailor in light winds? Um, I mean, I don't really have experience from being a, being a heavy sailor, uh, but um, I would say uh, maximize uh, your uh, trimming to the best you can, of course, and to, um, I mean, it's hard. Uh, I, I don't really have the experience from that, but m maybe should have someone else. Uh, maybe maybe your coach can come help later. Yeah, maybe know? maybe Tom can help, but uh, um, yeah, I don't really know uh, to be honest. Okay, if he if he wants to join, uh, you're more than welcome to Tom. Or if not, we can maybe discuss it at the end. We can answer the the rest of the questions. Um, yeah. So Elias is asking, what what's your biggest dream? Uh, my biggest dream is to win the Olympics. In a, in a, but that's very that's very far ahead. Uh, I, I I will say twenty nine er and we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, but we'll just keep trying to have fun and improve. Uh, and then uh, um, William is my crew, and me and William are thinking that after the twenty nine er we we'll sail the forty nine er together if we get tall enough. I don't know if I will, uh, but. <laughs> um and yeah that's my biggest dream but it's a it's a long journey and it's a it's very far ahead so i just have to keep uh, enjoying uh, the sailing till that part okay. so it's a dream right now far away yeah, it's dream, a right? dream it's a dream so nice so nice and then johannes is asking if any trick in the opposite any tricks for a small sailor in heavy winds um just go for a show no yeah uh I would say uh, I always had uh, in uh, in regattas when it was strong wind. My goal was always to not be um, like I knew at the top mark I wouldn't maybe be first, but I would really uh, train the downwind so that I'd be fast on the downwind. Uh, because I was I, I got very fast on the downwind, and then my goal was to be fast, uh, be first in the gate, and. Uh, um, uh, I also think it's very important that for small sailors to develop a really good bailing technique and a technique where you maybe point a bit higher than everybody else and you spill more wind, uh, but you keep the boat as flat as you can, not that you have the boat healing a lot, is very important, I think. Okay, okay. Um, well, I think well, then you. there's... Many more questions. You maybe want to answer the last one, Tom? The one about the tips for the heavy sailors? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. OK, we don't have more questions. OK, guys, uh, thank you for coming. For us, it's, it's amazing that you come to listen, Henrik. Uh, we will do more webinars with more sellers. We, we will try to do every two weeks. And well, uh, we are in Instagram. We have the website here. And we try to give you all that we can. It's a new project that now we are starting some sellers that now we are selling. For example, me, I'm, I am in 49er. But well, for us, it's really important that uh, we need to help people, help the sailors, give some advice, also some advice from other of the of the sailors. And no more. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining. Thank you. I, I would, uh, if, if any of you guys have any questions, you can just uh, send a message to me on Instagram and maybe I will answer it. Uh, with, not, not here with camera and mic. It's not, uh, yeah. And uh, um, I hope I did all right. And thank you so much that I could be here. To serve. Yeah, nice. thank, th thanks for joining, Henrik. It was great. And you spoke really good. So yes, I think thanks that, a lot I for think joining. That, uh, the, the sailors, they learn a lot and they enjoy. And this is the most important thing. Thank you. Someone, oh, yeah. Someone had yeah. the hands up. Yeah, yeah. the people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, nice. Bye. Bye-bye.